By now, you should have a good idea on what you can expect from hell. You know to eliminate the first person you see when you fight your way out of a birthing sack. You know to find clothing, tools, and shelter. You know that no matter what you do, how well you do, someday, it's back to being fresh meat. This is the biggest city you can imagine. Tribes fight and die for territory, and taking a wrong turn is a death sentence. You'll get a feel for where you should and shouldn't go eventually. Develop the kind of street smarts you need to stay a resident for more than a day. Even so, there are places in Dis that you should know about. Let's do a little sightseeing tour of hell. Maybe the advance warning will do you some good. Skin Street Allow me to tell you about the first time I saw Skin Street. I dropped out of my birthing sack onto the road, stood straight back up and got ready to fight, but nobody was there. Not a single person was out on the street that stretched for miles in either direction. I relaxed a little and took a look around. Most of the streets in Dis are a labyrinth network of buildings. You spend most of your stay in hell paranoid that, just around the next corner, there's someone ready to beat you down. Skin Street isn't like that. It's a single straight line with only the rain and darkness to hamper visibility. I felt more vulnerable there than I've ever felt in any other part of this. You ever walked into a wide empty space and suddenly felt exposed? Yeah, imagine also being naked, unarmed, and in hell. Still, I knew what I was supposed to do. The first step was to find some clothing. That's where I learned how Skin Street got its name. Every building, every busted street light and gas lamp was decorated with flayed skin. I'd been in hell long enough by that point to not be freaked out, but I'd be lying if I said it didn't affect me. In a messed up kind of way, it reminded me of Christmas. You know, people hanging wreaths and lights from their house. That sort of thing. I remember the time I'd spent with my family, with my kids on Christmas morning. Feelings like that will get you killed. I pushed them back down and pulled some scraps from the nearest building. If somebody was going to leave clothing material lying around, I might as well take it, right? I didn't know it at the time, but every step I took on Skin Street was being watched. When the attack came, I didn't even get a glimpse of the guy. Bang. My skull fractured from an expert swing of a club. Whoever hit me went for my eyes the second I hit the floor. Stuck his fingers straight into my sockets. I was blind and crying like a baby when he started to peel away my skin. Here's the thing. Some people are messed up even by hell standards. The loners, serial killers, stalkers, and all psychos make their way to Skin Street in the end. Most of the damned use the whole body of a kill, but the Skin Street people like to take trophies. They leave their ornaments out as bait for the ignorant, skulking in the shadows and waiting for the best moment to ambush. If you find yourself on Skin Street, you're going to have to think fast. Forget the clothing. Just grab a rock or a piece of wood or anything else you can use as a weapon. Stay out of the shadows. Keep checking behind you and get out of there as quickly as you can. Perdition Farms. You're going to be chased in hell. That's unavoidable. At some point, you'll stumble into somebody bigger than you or you'll find yourself outnumbered. Forget about a fair fight. If somebody can take you down without you fighting back, you bet that's what they'll do. It's easy to lose focus when you're running for your life. You can forget to pay attention to your surroundings. That, my friend, is a big mistake. The outskirts of Perdition Farms are littered with billboards. They promise free food and safety to anybody stupid enough to believe them. The tribes that fight over that particular territory like to herd people off the streets and into the industrial complex they call home. The good news is that the tribes won't kill you. The bad news is that they're big fans of taking people alive. They've got a project, you see. Been working on it for as long as I can remember. I couldn't tell you who originally decided that Hell should have organized food production, only that the idea stuck, and that over years. Countless tribes have taken it upon themselves to try to make that dream a reality. Get yourself captured by them, and you can look forward to a bit of slave labor. For the most part, the Perdition Farm tribes try to make use of the birthing sacks as a source of food. 
They forced their slaves to harvest them from their walls, grind them up in industrial vats, mix them with blood, body parts, rainwater, and anything else that they can conceivably make a broth out of. The life of a slave is short, brutal, and disgusting, particularly when those slaves are used as guinea pigs for the latest concoction. You see, amniotic fluid can be drunk if you're desperate, though drinking too much is guaranteed to make you empty your stomach from every available orifice. The flesh of the sacks is a different matter, though. I couldn't tell you exactly what the birthing sacks are. Some people say that they're actual flesh, while others swear they're more like a fungus. What I do know is that they repaired themselves over time. Eat some of their flesh and over the next few days you'll grow a new birthing sack inside of you. It's a small mercy that you won't live long enough to see it break through your skin. You'll be dead shortly after your stomach bursts. If you're lucky, your days as a slave will end when the tribe decides that they want some real meat. They're not stupid enough to test their broth themselves. Not when there's no shortage of slaves in hell. Look. I can't force you to stay out of perdition farms. I can only offer advice. In my opinion, if you think you're being herded there, it's better to take whatever's to hand and eliminate yourself. I'd take fresh meat status a hundred times before spending another day on the farms, the boneyard. So maybe you're thinking to yourself, hey, I'm the kind of nut job who'd join a cult. Is there anything in hell for me? If that sounds like you, the boneyard has you covered. You see, there's a certain kind of religious fanatic who really does belong in hell. I'm not talking about the old beers who bake cakes to raise money for the new church roof here. I'm talking about the guys who went to war because God commanded it, who burned women for supposedly consorting with demons and who saw nothing wrong with screwing up a kid. When those people get to hell, they're too thick-headed to make sense of what happened. Why face reality when you can pretend it's all just a test of faith? They find like-minded folk in the boneyard. I'm told that at one time, the boneyard was a cathedral surrounded by a cemetery that stretched from horizon to horizon. Maybe that's true. I don't know. These days, it's a shanty town of temples and churches built from material scavenged from the streets. Everywhere you look, you'll find wide-eyed zealots preaching their own twisted version of redemption and gangs of masked men on the prowl for fresh converts. Mortification of the flesh is the main pastime in the boneyard. If you listen to the cacophony of sermons, you'll be informed of how the flesh is wicked and must be purged of sin. How lucky we are to be given such a holy duty. How fortunate to be given the opportunity to redeem ourselves before God. The people of the boneyard have had a long time and plenty of practice when it comes to mastering torture and degradation. I'm not a good person. I've killed but I can honestly tell you that I'd never been able to dream up some of the stuff that goes on in the boneyard. I wandered in there by accident once, and I've never been able to get what I saw out of my brain. A preacher sewed his own eyes and lips shut in front of a crowd before sawing off his manhood with a piece of slate. I could list off a hundred other atrocities done in the name of redemption. Stay away from the boneyard. The people there decided that hell just isn't hellish enough for their liking. Forget about redemption. Forget about God. The only way out of hell is by riding a pillar of fire and taking over a living body. Focus on that if you want to escape. The damned can't offer you salvation. The damned only offer pain.